true. Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Gutfeld, along with Kimberly Guilfoyle, Juan Williams, Brian Kilmeade, and she was little Mindy on Mork and Mindy, <laughs> Melissa Francis, The Five. Oh, my God. In a CNN interview, Donald Trump was asked what he would say to the Pope if he were to meet him next month. Roll it, Sven. The Pope believes that capitalism can be a real avenue to greed, it can be really toxic and corrupt, and he's shaking his finger at you when he says it. What do you say in response to the Pope? I'd say ISIS wants to get you. You know that ISIS wants to go in and take over the Vatican. You have heard that. You know that's a dream of theirs, to go into he Italy. Talks. If you look at what's going on, they better hope that capitalism works, because it's the only thing we have right now. And it's a great thing when it works properly. Well done. Now, I think it's great for Donald to meet the Pope. Here you have together an outspoken leader of a major religion and the Pope. <laughs> but Donald is right, especially since the Pope has bashed capitalism, which has lifted millions out of misery. And he's also said that Charlie Hebdo victims should have known better. That's not good. As for ISIS, they do want to kill the Pope, but they want to kill everyone, including themselves. Heaven awaits such tools. But Trump should take his own advice, too, and put all focus on those who wish to destroy us. Just for fun, let's ponder these headlines from the past. Clinton sees crisis from global warming. It's time to fix America's broken immigration system. Both of those headlines were, for, were from September 10th, 2001, the day before 9-11. There were no headlines on Islamic terror, but lots on immigration and global warming. So while those concerns matter, it's the stuff we never see coming that gets us. We're facing a new age of terror. Today's technology married to today's hate. When ghouls master new methods of mayhem, today's barbarism will seem like the good old days. So if you're ever going to be a single issue voter, that's your issue. Our next president must put aside platitudes and come to grips with a new threat that's almost too horrid to contemplate. A store-bought drone with aerosol spores offers 10 9-11s at a fraction of the cost. If that doesn't get the Pope's or Donald's and America's attention, then nothing will. What a great meeting, KG, if the Pope and Donald got together. What do you, how do you think that would go? I would like to get an invite. Yes. I would for sure RSVP immediately. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it would definitely be um, a surprise, probably for both, you know, depending on how that went. But when you see his comments right away off the bat, he's like, the first thing he thinks about with the Pope is, hey, the, uh, hey Pope, ISIS is after you. <laughs> it's not exactly what you think your opening line would be, right? Yeah. But he wants to get right to the point and say, look, there's this threat of global terrorism. And then he also wants to then sell capitalism to the Pope. I I'm all in on him bringing up those two ideas, put it yes. that way. Juan, what did you make of that? It's true. I mean, uh, 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 that, those are bigger concerns than the, the Pope's, I think. What do you mean? Well, terror. ISIS is a little more inter is a little more uh, scary or scarier than uh, air conditioning, which well, the Pope seems to hate. Wait a second, wait a second. The Pope is an Argentinian, and he's talking about people who live on farms where they're being exploited by capitalists. Not just that. Uh, well, he's talking play that about. Game with me. He, I am playing that game. No, you Remember are. the dung of the devil. You yourself said what? that there is such a thing as. Are we in medieval Pope. times? Yes. Remember that's what that, yeah, fact, that's, that's what Donald said. I remember right, that. I know. Yeah, and last time you were talking about how the Pope said, you know, you got to watch. Watch out for people who exploit folks. Mm -hmm. That's right. what he sees as capitalism. He's a communist. Right. He's a communist. He is a communist. Right. Let's admit it, people. Right. Okay, first off, yes. uh, Donald Trump is brilliant <laughs> at finding out. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for welcoming me, Greg. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for Eric, hope he feels better. But real quick, um, essentially, Donald Trump is brilliant at finding somebody's weakness. Yes. So he says, okay, the Pope really has a problem with capitalism. Mm -hmm. Who's protecting you? And by the way, who is the superpower that's got your back? We are. Mm -hmm. Now let's drill down on capitalism. Do you have a better idea, Mr. Pope? If you want to be, and, and that's a show of respect, Mr. Pope, uh, if, you <laughs> want, if you want to be uh, protected, if you have a better way, if you want to further perfect capitalism, that's fine. To show kindness, we're the kindest, most charitable nation in the world. To tell us to not alter money and profit. When we go ahead and pursue money and profit, we create jobs and opportunity. That is so true, Melissa. I, I, we can, go ahead, call us greedy. We cannot possibly fight about this again. <laughs> what I love about this is like every answer with Donald Trump, he starts answering and you go, he's crazy. And then he talks for a little while longer and you're like, wait a second, there's sense in there. He was saying, 
why the heck are we talking about capitalism when ISIS is coming to kill us? Mm -hmm. We need to focus on other things. So he was shifting the focus. I also like how he said, I have great respect for the probe. I like him. I actually like him. That's like the kiss of death from Trump. Yeah, right? yeah, he yeah, like yeah. comes in right afterwards and is like, but you're an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's always when he says he likes you. Right. He's he like, watch screaming. out. I want to run this. This is uh, uh, Donald Trump talking about where he gets his military views from since he's talking about ISIS. You uh, talk to for military advice right now? Well, I watch the shows. I mean, I really see a lot of great, you know, when you watch your show and all of the other shows and you have the generals so and, you you have, the, and you have certain people that you like. But is there somebody, is there a go-to for you? You know, uh, probably every, there are two every or three. presidential candidate has yeah, a go-to. Probably it. there are two or three. I, I mean, I like Bolton. I think he's, you know, tough cookie, knows what he's talking about. Uh, Jacobs is you a good guy. You mean Ambassador John Bolton? Yes. Bolton. You mean I think Colonel Jack Jacobs. Colonel Jack Jacobs is a good guy, and I see him on occasion. So, Kimberly, we're talking about some serious topics. Mm -hmm. Should we trust a man who gets his information from the Sunday shows, even though he mentions Bolton, which is a – if you put Bolton yeah. in his administration, that would be great. Because well, he was the yeah, king of Red Eye, wasn't he? He the was the king of Red, Red Eye yes, for a long was. time until well, I – Well, that doesn't bother me. I'd rather you be exposed to a variety of different mediums and get your information from newspapers, from watching great interviews. You can learn a lot. Right. But didn't we so make fun of bother. President Obama for saying for these things? Oh, absolutely. Like he would say, I, I, I found out about it on TV, and we mercilessly – mocked him. All right, well, I don't have a problem with it, but you can't over I, I, I think I it's fine that. if he listens I, I to Ambassador Bolton I, or, or General Jack Keane is another person. I, 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 I thought you would bring up Jack because you he's know, your I favorite. I know you right. do, so I appreciate that. But I was going to say <laughs> that he says his favorite website is Drudge. Mm -hmm. He says he gets everything from Drudge, thinks Drudge is a genius mm -hmm. uh, because he's well informed after reading Drudge. And now he's telling us he watches the shows and mm -hmm. Feels he can get all the information. He reads all the newspapers as well. Well, I somehow don't oh, think that right. he really meant that. It's, I think, it's, I think it's, it's, it's Trump's weakest moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's be honest. We, uh, we watched all the interviews. He's compelling. He's great television. Uh, it's his weakest moment. But he also made a, a speech yesterday. He had one excerpt and said, I'm going to be uh, a bit of a sleeper on the military. People are going to be surprised how good I am on it. What he does is he finds experts in areas. Right. He's not going to be there calling the shots and saying, put the cannons here and the ICB uh, uh, missiles here. Uh, he's going to be getting the best people involved in doing their things and executing the plan like George Bush had a way of saying the generals you've been in military your entire life why am I calling the shots tell me your yeah. plan sell me on these well, plans make debate sense? it in front of me it's yes. like best practices you look and see what works you go to the but that would have been a better answer expertise. my answer would have been a better answer yeah, yeah I, I think your answer, my answer is better than his answer but do you yeah. think that he's ill-prepared or ill-equipped or doesn't you think have he has answer? any experience Dude, Kimberly? I, I, I think this do, question actually. was for Brian Kilmeade who made the criticism what I'm saying is it's okay to have a resource of course no one thinks that Donald Trump is buying buildings and is a military expert. No, I hope but not. his answer would probably be, you know, I'm going to refer to uh, Cohen Powell or I'm going to be finding the best military advisors I can get a hold of, mm -hmm. and therefore I won't have a policy. It'll uh, be Amorosa. Right, uh, Amorosa, who was the villain <laughs> yes. in almost <laughs> every <laughs> single episode. <laughs> the, the, the yeah, even the celebrity. She even made Celebrity Apprentice. Yes. But that's what deal guys do. I mean, that's what business guys like he Correct. You, you don't only buy companies that you know exactly how to run that company as the CEO. You're only one person. I mean, you buy a company and then you identify who's the best in that space. You put him in there to run that business. Right. So he's not expected to know how to do every single thing. He is expected to know how to find the best people to give him the best advice in the areas that he doesn't know. Yeah, but know. you're expected to have some foreign policy. Policy expertise. I mean, that's like where the president, president Obama makes a when difference. When he's a community organizer. No, but the president was in the Senate and dealing with some of these for 144 issues. days. Let me just say that you know, Mike uh. Hayden, the former CIA director. Yesterday, we were talking about Michael Hayden mm -hmm. at, at his experience. And Michael Hayden said, this is ridiculous. How can you say you're watching TV? I mean, this is like Uncle Jack screaming at the TV. Oh, my God, I can't stand these people. And he's not running the country? You're right. going to trust that guy with the bomb? Well, I mean, it's just one bad answer. He, yeah. gave a, he gave a bad answer. Uh, we have a, a collection of shots of him also discussing uh, What are shots? Sound on tape. Oh. Crazy <laughs> little man. He acts like he's just woke up today. All right, run it, please. We have to stop the ISIS. I, I didn't want to do... Iraq, it was a big mistake. It should never have happened. The way we got out was also a big mistake. We cannot let ISIS continue to do what they're doing. I believe more strongly in the military and military strength than anybody running by a factor of a million. I will tell you, and I told them, we are going to make our military so strong and so powerful and so incredible. We're going to take care of our vets, by the way, as part of it, bigly. So, uh, Brian, there's a new poll that says 32% trust him most to handle ISIS, which uh, uh, nobody else came close. My, my issue is we're not talking about um, 
military intelligence anymore. We're not talking about these other threats. Willingness. That, We're talking about a willingness. A yes. willingness to have an objective and to implement that objective. You get David Petraeus, you don't wing it because you've been in big business. Colin Fiorina has a very similar mantra. I, I, on the international front, I deal with a lot of world leaders. I got them in my uh, cell phone. So that's what Donald Trump has. He knows Vladimir Putin. He travels to Scotland and deals with uh, not only the golf course, but with the leadership there because he's got to cut the best tax deal possible. Right. I like but, you say he knows Putin. <laughs> he knows Putin. I'm name dropping for somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the big problem. Is that right. you, but he does know him. I mean, how many guys out there could say I could call Vladimir Putin? He likes to see me. Yes. I don't know. It seems like a lot of people have to explain what Donald Trump says. Because what Donald Trump says is what you want to hear, but he doesn't articulate it. So he's it. like a Rorschach painting. Where yes. You look into it and you see exactly what but, you want yeah, to hear. Brian just working saw for what he wanted to see. In yeah. Context. It's where I, I mean, but the flip side of that, Juan, to go back to your point, I mean, talk about him not having foreign policy experience. Do you like Hillary Clinton's experience in Benghazi more? Mm -hmm. I mean, she has a track record that people don't like. No, no, that's not true. I mean, really? what she ha I don't think so. I mean, from my perspective, you can say, oh, I don't like the outcome with Benghazi, but this woman's been like around the, the world with and dealt with with world leaders and has not only that, she remember she was in the White House, she was but in the Dell Senate. But Dell successfully won? I don't, Dell yeah, I think she had, I know but, you don't, but I'm telling you, I think she does. Now, I will say this for Mr. Trump, he promises that he's gonna get his wife out. And I'm thinking maybe she will make sense well, for us. I, I actually, in all seriousness, well, his greatest asset lovely. is his family. Uh, if you talk to Eric, you talk to Don Jr., you talk to Ivanka, if you cannot be a part-time, somewhat interested parent who's an egomaniac, as he's been labeled, and produce these children who are fine, upstanding people who look up and, and worship their dad. Nobody disagrees with that. Yeah, you know? and, and he says no, you he's left out the unleashed. Right. left out a couple other wives who are equal. <laughs> All right. I, I actually <laughs> left I mean, out uh, Tiffany. Yes, who I don't really know. By the way, just before we go, this is uh, to you, Kimberly. He's the master of leverage. He uh, he wondered if he should go to CNN and tell them he's not going to debate, be part of the debate, unless CNN gives $10 million to a charity. So he's basically blackmailing. He's extorting He's them. extorting CNN. You got to... It's funny. What a great businessman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what if he did that to and, us? And to such, Fox. such transparency. Yes. Oh, oh God never, knows we would never pay. do it here. Is it, isn't that, that what he did with the immigration plan? Yeah. He's shooting for the moon. It's going to cost $160 billion. He's going to end up with half that and said, I got a success. I moved the goalpost back and I ended up on the, with 100 yards. He's going to build a wall and have CNN pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Anything is possible. Right. All right. I find yeah, you look at Kimberly a lot and you have never welcomed Melissa. I think you should. Welcome I Melissa. welcomed in the intro. Uh, Remember? All right. A man likes what he likes. Okay. Leave him alone. <laughs> okay. Who can blame? I'm moving on from this travesty. <laughs> Coming up, Donald and Jeb traded attacks at town halls in New Hampshire. What uh, they're saying about each other ahead.